Well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Hugging Raw. Episode one. Episode one, where you get to see the behind the scenes of how we develop some of these ideas that we teach in our workshops. All the hard work. Raw. So today we're going to be talking about ownership number 11, which is I got this. We just said it was Hugging Raw number one. Right, but this kind of still be delivered. <laughs> okay, yes. okay, I got you, I got you. But I mean, this is still ownership 11. Why don't you give some framing then as to why I'm here? If it's hugging raw one, but on your shit 11. I think we're slowly exploring how we can uh, both work together, share together, share the space, and both of us be big and connected. So I actually was going to say that I think it's more of um, an understanding that we don't live in vacuums and therapists don't live in vacuums either. And if they're fully present and taking in their learnings, then that influences their house life. And just like, you know, we think that we don't bring work home and we think that kind of there isn't spillover. There is, there is spillover. If you had a bad day at work, then it's very hard not to kind of bring that home. Um, and so also with family therapists, I think that if they're really diving into the systems and the individuals and the situations, then that is definitely going to come home as well as the literature and the theories that they're learning. And I think that one of the great things about you is that you really dive into the theories and the things that you're learning and researching about, and you're not afraid to apply it on yourself. And that also includes me and our marriage and our relationship and so therefore because you're willing to kind of dive in there and not just take the approach of do as I do uh sorry do as I say kind of thing but not actually doing the work and not actually diving into the concepts behind the theories and and how did these you know great minds realize these theories you you dive in and you do it and lucky for you I do it with you so here we are if I add to that, I think all all therapists are hypocrites. Right? I think about, all humans are hypocrites. Sure. So what I've realized in the past few years as I'm supervising new therapists is that the ones that do not do the work in their own marriage um, have a glass ceiling, if I can use that term. Allow it. Allow it. So I can really distinguish between the, couple, the therapists that are actually doing the work at home and try to work on themselves and their own marriage and opening up and owning their shit to therapists that don't. And the ones that do have a much richer practice, have a much richer, deeper understanding. And I think it's clear to me that if you weren't here, I wouldn't be able to uh, to see. Maybe I could have, I could see that I could understand it, but I wouldn't be able to feel it and recognize it and call other people on their shit. Cool. So thank you. Well, and thank you. Thank you. For letting me in and bringing your mastery home. Right. And what you're going to be seeing live is where it's going to be hard for me to let her in. I'm used to being a one-man show, so you're probably going to be seeing me jabbing her, talking <laughs> over her, mansplaining her. But that's okay because I'm a woman, so I'm used to all these things, and I know how to cope. I have, I have, I have my shield. I have my coping mechanisms, and I am ready to go. So let's try. And I'm okay. I'm. It's fine. It, there's a lot of um, power. I want to say also in kind of. Well, this is controversial what I was going to say, so maybe I'll, sure, I'll hold it. on that. Sure. Well, there's, but I don't know if that's us slipping into our old dance, but into our old dance. But I think that there's also a lot of power in um, being a very stable um, sidekick because then that allows kind of the one man show to kind of dip in and out and um, kind of, you know, explore. But with like a stable sidekick that isn't that isn't um, afraid to be the sidekick, then you can actually like go really far. It's the first. It's the concept, I guess, of the first follower, right? That sidekick is, I guess, interchangeable with the first follower. That's what I mean. And I consider myself to be your number one first follower. But I say I struggles with that. Because but I'm, that we'll get to that. That'll be another episode. That's a different episode. Stay tuned. 
So should we talk a little bit? Yes, let's talk. Let's, let's share the incident that happened today, which is an which is a um, concept that we've been talking about and exploring for a really long time. And to be completely honest, I don't think that we even have found exactly a resolution or a solution or, or a full understanding. But it's um, a concept that every time Asael kind of brings it up, I know that I there's a part of me that kind of gets into a little bit of like red and trauma mind and. And on the one hand, um, and I said I'll explain what the concept is, but on the one hand, when he kind of uses this term, I, I feel like, yes, I can rise to the occasion. And then on the other hand, I feel like, oh, my God, I don't, don't use such a big word. I don't want that. And it isn't actually such a big word, but you'll see. Go. So today I want to talk about, I got this. Take a load off your partner and grow. And the ideas at work, and especially I know for your work, like we love the people that the GSDs, that get you done. They do it, they take responsibility over that they're holding the project, they can delegate to other people. Even if the whole team is doing it, there that the buck stops with them and they're holding this project from beginning to end. And we they're like, I got this. I got this. I got this. Right. Right? We love those people. In fact, I think you're one of those people at work. I think that's really one of your strengths. And obviously those people <clears throat> are rare and you love those people. So why don't we do that at home? Or why don't you do that? <laughs> so sure. yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Jabbing. <laughs> Jabbing. So why don't we do that? Nice. Why, why don't you do that at home? So I want to give the example that we had today, okay? Today, this morning, um, we went to the U.S. Embassy, and Asael took ownership over, over this whole um, escapade to the U.S. Embassy, and he was like, Galit, we need to renew the kids' passports. We're going uh, to visit my family in the States in August. And he was like, we're going to renew all our passports. And, and I'm on it. And I made the appointment. And I have all the documents. And all you need to do is print the application form. And I was like, great. I don't need to deal with the bureaucracy. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to worry about any of this. And that meant that I didn't even actually check when our passports were expired. Um, and we got to the U.S. Embassy, and we're leaving in a month. You know, sometimes these things can take some time. And as the woman's, like, punching holes in the kids' um, passports, I get them back, and now they're canceled passports because they have the holes in them. And I see that... Lila had until February 2020, and Sal had until um, August 2022, I think. And all of a sudden, I was like panicked because while Asael was all confident and like, yeah, I got this, I got it done, I was panicking that if we don't get our passports back in time for whatever reason, and there's always some bureaucratic reason, we're we're toast. And I was getting really anxious while I said, I was like, yeah, got it, nailed it. And then any kind of questioning that came to be was immediately kind of, um, the, his defense was, well, you don't have it. You're not owning it. And I felt like, but I wasn't even given a chance because when the, you know, when the, the deadline is, February 2020, that like there wasn't even a conversation. There wasn't even a, um, oh, look, um, you know, Lila's passport is done in February 2020. Let's figure out when a good time to go is or and, and this notion. And I think that this is part of the issue. I think that part of the issue is that we have kind of different definitions of what holding it means. And when Nasael says, I'm holding it or will you hold it, then it, it's this feeling of loneliness like oh then then that means I need to hold it all by myself and then that's that makes me feel like well I don't I don't want to hold it all by myself so never mind you know because holding it all by yourself especially in a in a partnership means that that you're that you're ultimately saying that like I will be you know solely responsible and I will be the person to be blamed rather than if it's together in partnership 
Okay. <laughs> so first, I want to I want to add to that because the whole idea is why why don't we do this at work? Why don't we do this at home? And I think I want to connect because I feel like this example is a perfect example of why don't I ask you? Why don't I plan together with you? Because you take pride in me holding a lot of the logistical stuff in our house. You're like saying, I like the fact that I don't know about the kids thing. Like, so when it's comfortable for you, you don't want to hold it. And then when, when something makes you anxious, you're suddenly saying, well, why don't you share? So you can't have it both ways. I mean, you can, but then what happens is over time, and this is what I want to talk about. So why don't people do it? I think there's four reasons. One do is, what? why don't people say to their partners, I got this? Especially when the partner says, Are you got, do you got this? Can you hold this for a month? So I think there's four reasons. First of all, is uh, passive aggressive. They just want to stick it to their partner. Sticking it. The second is a fear that I will disappoint. I'll disappoint you, I'll disappoint myself. Like, uh, for instance, like the other example is now she's responsible for finding the, how to, how to extend and renew our Israeli passports. And that's a whole different bureaucracy. And, and you're feeling like you're, you're like not, you don't know what to do. And then I feel like there's almost like, uh, take it. <laughs> Right. Abby. So there's a fear to disappoint that. Am Just I right? Because my robot help application wasn't right. working. <laughs> so you kind of are creating because you're like, I don't know what to do. You're like, I said, please take it in. That's not true. I never said, I don't know what to do. Please take it. Right. But you're, you're not giving assuming. Assuming. But, but you're Who not? likes to deal with bureaucracy? Nobody likes to deal with bureaucracy. And yes, there is a part of me that is very proud that you're like on, you know, right. all the. And then you're wondering why I'm not asking you before, before doing this American passports. You can't. They're not going to give you got the. And like, even now, are you, do you hold these real passports? Do you, do you, are you holding that? Are you going to find it? And set but this is the thing, right? Because if we want our partners to hold something, first of all, I don't think that it should be something that's looming over. And sometimes I feel like the way you do it is that it's like a, a big, it's like, are you holding this? Like yeah. a big looming. It's like test number 543. Right, but you're not holding it. You're but not, how do you know that? Just because you don't see. Because I'm yet. not seeing, I'm what, not what seeing an you appointment. Seeing? You're not giving any data. What, it, what are we literally doing? Literally last week he asked me if I was holding the biometric, like right. So, what gives me confidence that you're holding it is but that this here. Is the thing, is it, if you want to let your partner hold other things, then you also need to relinquish control. Exactly. But he, but Dr. Estel Romanelli, you're not relinquishing control. Another example. Oh my God, this is the best one. We went to our grocers, okay, to get produce. <laughs> We made the order together, literally in the car. In the car, we're making an order together, right? We need this, we need that. Uh, and then I remembered something. I said, I remembered something great. Okay. Then he's like, Gilly, get out of the car and pick up the stuff. Fine, he's driving. Obviously, I'll get out and pick up the stuff. Great. I hop out. And now I am in the store, okay? I am in the store. I am, you know, on site. He is, that means he has to relinquish control. I walk in, I see avocados. This is also testament to our group line. I see the avocados on the side. I pick them up. I feel them. Most of them are like well overdue, practically rotten. So I'm like, no, this isn't going to work. So I just go to get the stuff that I want. All of a sudden, three texts already, boom, 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 in my WhatsApp. What about avocado? What about pineapple? What about this, that, and the other? And I turn and literally shout, thank God we live in Israel, shout, outside to where I said it and I'm like but I'm inside like you've passed over the baton let me do it you've relinquished control you have to trust that I'm going to do it and you have to trust that if I'm going to do it it's not going to be like you and that's okay and you know what with the passports I wouldn't have done it I would not have um I would not have renewed every single person's passport just because one passport needed to be I'm really interested to know what other people would do. But, you know, just because one passport needed to be renewed, I wouldn't necessarily take the whole family or I wouldn't take the whole family now. But, but, but I don't necessarily have a say. I handed it over to you. That's what you decided to do. Great. That doesn't mean that I'm not allowed to question. That doesn't mean that I'm not allowed to question. Question, I reserve, cranky, I reserve, question, critical. Right. You were sticking, I reserve, you were sticking sticks in the I wasn't. Wheel, right? I was Over questioning. Up. I was hey, asking. Own your shit. Own your shit. I, I don't know. Show everybody how it looks to own your shit. <laughs> um, I, was, I, I, I apologize for being critical. I did. I did. Give me that. Okay. Can you say that though? You were jabby <clears throat> and you were kind of sticking it to me. You weren't just asking questions innocently because you weren't letting go of control of me holding it. You didn't, you didn't approve the way I did it. But right now, at least 
I think it's if you're not more. But I think that's the comp like I completely agree with you that you like the, uh, one person needs to let go of control so the other one can hold it. And it's kind of like a chicken egg. Who's going to go first? So when Galit says she's holding the biometric uh, Israeli passports, I need to let go of that. But what happens is because we're, we're stuck in this dance a little bit, so she'll kind of share with me the difficulties. And when, when she shares the difficulties, for me, it activates me of like saying, I don't really have this. And then we're both kind of waiting for me to say, you know what, I'll just do it. You think that's the old I don't dance. think that that's necessarily true. I feel like I haven't actually been given a chance to. Maybe, but what you're sharing with me is like how it's not working for you, how no one's answering the phone, how you use it. And like when you're saying that to me, that's that's like you're a little bit teasing out that. No, I'm not. It. But see, okay, so this is like where interpretation comes into play because maybe, maybe I'm saying like, hey, mister, I'm on top of all the bureaucratic crap. How do I deal with this when, you know, they don't answer the phone and they, I, their website is not helpful? I'm looking to you for, for guidance and help and Wait, so experience. Wait, so check that right now because the one thing... I'm totally checking that right now. So what do you mean by guidance, really? Does that mean you... Because you, I don't know. Because like, then you, you told me what to do. You were like, oh, call that SMEF instead. Call that um, office instead of this office. Did you? I haven't yet. I haven't yet. Okay, Casetta. That was Thursday. Today, that was Wednesday. Today is Friday. I think at the end of the day, so why are people not saying it? And I just have to say that what's really interesting is that you wrote this stuff. We didn't talk about this necessarily before we started. And your bottom line is to let go of control and that it's not about efficiency. Right. So we are in agreement conceptually. We just right. haven't worked out the details of what that looks like. Right, because there's secondary. When you say to someone, when you don't say to someone, "I got this," so you're gaining security. It's a way for you to um, to to basically kind of you get a pass, which means you don't have to be doing it. But the price you pay over time is that partner, and I think this is what we're seeing here. Trusts you less and less to actually do it. He thinks that you're less and less capable of actually holding it. And it's a vicious cycle of, well, you don't believe in me, so screw you, you can do it yourself. And I'm like, okay. Because I, but then the person, if I, if I keep doing it, then I Just start being... Just because I do things differently than you doesn't mean that I'm not going to do them. You do things two years in advance. Okay. And I don't necessarily... So I'm saying, there's, there's a tension, like the, the person asking for the other one to let it, to hold on to it, to that person needs to let go of control. And the person that says, I got it, it's got to do a trembling, but it's got to do it. It's got to stand up and, and be ready that A, they might disappoint themselves or the partner. B, they might be getting flack for doing it differently, but that, sh that doesn't mean that they need to shy away and say, that, well, never mind, and you take it. I have to say, okay, I see it. It's hard for you to share the spotlight. It's hard for you to share the video. It's hard for you that the uh, biometric passports are taking longer, I'm, but I got it. Like, stop expecting your partner to say, take it, and then let go of control. If you really want to show your partner, then you got to step for it. I agree. And I think that there's room, and this is something that we know that we need to work on. There's room for finding that balance where it's not, I got this, and so you don't even need to be in the know, and I don't need to talk to you about it, and I don't need to ask you, you know, questions about it or share challenges about it but there's room to kind of put it together and say I've got this and I'm kind of you know on top of the details of it but let's figure out how we can do it together or in dialogue in conversation so for that though I want to yes and that like I can take the passports you've never asked me anything about it you're right and so that so, so, wait, so, wait. so like if so if you're getting but like someone else. with the biometric, for example, your assumption is that by me asking you questions, I'm trying to kind of to pass it on to you. And I'm saying, no, that's me saying, like, let's figure out how we do this in partnership rather than it's like, I got this. So you don't have to worry Would about you that own it. If you can you check for a second if there isn't a percentage of that that you're sharing that. So I will take it off your hands. Absolutely. That's not what there that's is. about. How much from one to ten? How much is that a factor? The time mm -hmm. being, I want you to take it off. Yeah. Can you share with me your problems? No, it with? was like a two. Two? Two. <laughs> so really? Okay. Really, that I... Okay, so I need to learn. Okay, so what, what, what will help us here, like you say, like, you're going to have to own your shit. When you are trying to dump it back, own it. And when you're not, and I get defensive or I get That's blaming. the thing. You say dump it back. But that means that it's all on one person's plate. And I'm saying, isn't there a way that we can, like disperse it so that either the plate is shared or the meal is shared mm -hmm. like why because it because because it, you're and we are very much talking about the either right and staying away from the either or and yet this whole 
I've got this and you're holding a conversation is either or, right? Either I'm holding it or you're holding it. And I think that we need to find a way to say, let's hold it together. And what does that look like? And I don't think that we've been able to successfully pinpoint what that looks like. And that's what I'm curious to, to figure out. And, and I think that part of this relates back to your previous episode about the 7095, right? That there are certain places where, you know, I've got this because I know, because I'm more responsible, because I'm, you know, on my shit, because I am more um, organized and I'm more efficient and I'm more whatever. But but I think that that as you kind of unpack those things and those kind of seesaw, then there must be a way to kind of bridge bridge that bridge that gap. Because I think that underlying this, I've got this, is a 95-70 is my sense. And that by sharing it, it's an attempt to go 50-50, 60-40, or, or, or at least kind of... I, I don't know. Like, I think I'm limited by my experience, and you're right. Maybe it's possible. I think for now, or at least as far as my research, my research has gone, which is our marriage and the couples I work with, is there's a certain... I don't... At the end of the day, there needs to be someone next to that dotted line. I know for me at least the way that work is. I but can why work. can't we both be signed off? That's I guess that's what I'm saying, right? This is a shared partnership. We both need to sign. We both need to sign off on it. But at the end of the day, right? I agree with you. But at the end of the day, no, someone, said, someone said, but someone you need, need to do the actual action in the universe to call to set the appointment up. And you can't do everything together. Maybe part of the differentiation is realizing same doesn't mean that's you, right. Right? you can't do everything together. But when right. but when that when the outset is you're holding it. Then you're saying you're signed on the dotted line. Well, I mean, if I need to do a reframe, when I say you're, you're holding it, it's like me saying, I want to lean on you. This is not a punishment holding it on. It's like, I'm asking you, please, like, it's a it's a bid. Like, hold a little bit. Now, you're right. Sometimes you're saying it as a punishment. Like, you got this. Screw you. But a lot of times, I, I, at least for me, it's like, I, I, like, I'm begging you, like, hold this so I can let a little bit off my mind so I don't have to hold so much. So I can step into create into potential state so I can let go a little bit. Right. And like when the when the partner's not giving you that, he's like refusing because he's scared, a passive aggressive, whatever, then then that and you're still holding that like this tension you're holding it. Right. And like that's a gift you're you're not giving your partner. You're not giving your partner saying, I got this. Lie down on the sofa. I got this. I'm gonna get you water or whatever. So I'm just saying as an example. And at the end of the day, we all want we have this, maybe it's a childhood fantasy that people will take care of us, but even just, I, sometimes I just want someone to take the load off. That's why I call the chapter, take a load off. Take a load off your partner and say, I got this. So I'm inviting you to kind of think about this instead of saying, I'm blaming you. I mean, you could say it's also 95 70. It's true. But I also think there's another dimension of it, which is it's a bid from your partner saying, please hold this for me. So I totally hear you, and I remember once we had a conversation about that, and and, and when that was kind of the framing, it, I was like, yes, like, let, let me take a load off. But I think that... You're right, the, I don't verbalize the, it like this. I think that the kind of the, the packaging and the intentionality really matters. And when it's, it, and it may start off as kind of take a load off because, you know, I'm overwhelmed or take a load off because I have a lot on my mind. But then when it becomes kind of a micromanagement or checking, then, you know, who, who wants to do that? Who wants to, who well, wants that, to take... I think the micromanagement and the checking is, is part of the old dance where I don't, I don't relinquish control. You don't really trust that I'm asking you. Then you start either fumbling or whatever. And then it's just the, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like a snowball we can't stop. I think if, if each one of us can stop being insulted, um, disappointed, or surprised when the other one goes. And if we can give each other the benefit of the doubt, that right. if I'm asking you, it's not because I'm trying okay. to kind of okay. so when I do, send it back your so way. So when I, when I do interpret like that, instead of getting disappointed, upset, or, uh, or discouraged, just breathe and say, okay, you're going to the old dance. I did that. So I think at the end of the day, I'll, um, I mean, we won't talk about the whole content. We'll do that in a separate episode. <laughs> but I think what I want to say as, as part of the Hugging Raw episode one is 
as you can see, there's a lot of different dimensions. There's the there's gender dimension, there's the um, the, you know, the power dynamics dimension, and I think there's also the manipulate manipulation and the power dynamics. I just repeated myself. Power distribution. Yeah. I think, but I'm not sure that. Well, go I on. think at the end of the day, like we shouldn't be afraid of. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go there. We shouldn't be afraid of our partners leaning on us. Right. And like it's sometimes it's scary because if, what if we won't be able to hold them? What if they leave? Because at the end of the day, we're afraid. We're all afraid of intimacy. We're all afraid of being vulnerable. We don't want to protect ourselves. So if I start saying, "I got this, I got this," and the partner's leaning on me, what happens if I get tired? What happens if I won't do it? I think it's even more than that. I think that we're all afraid of being disappointed and being disappointing. Because we're all afraid of. I mean, it's all about being loved. Like, why, why am I afraid of being disappointed? Because I'm afraid you won't love me if I'll disappoint you. So rather, I, I think it's also kind of being big, right? Because um, what if I won't succeed? <clears throat> what if I really can't hold this? Will you still love me? Will you still love me if I can't really take these things on? And at the end of the day, that's not a Well, good... you admitted that you made a mistake with the passports today, and I loved you even more for it. You forgot to mention that part. It's true. <laughs> so can we be... Can we stop being afraid of being loved? Can we can we stop being afraid of being small? And can we stop being afraid of disappointing our partner? Because we know we will disappoint our partner, it's inevitable. But is that a reason not to take ownership on certain things? Not to let your partner take something off their back? I think we I think we can take a chance and go there. Because at the end of the day, if not, basically what we're gonna do we're gonna start avoiding, avoiding certain issues, avoiding our partner. Um, it's gonna be an either or, and it's gonna be almost like um how is Pete Casanut in Hebrew? How do you say that in English? Um, taking tabs. Yeah. Like an open tab. Like, I'm holding this, I'm holding this, she's holding this, she's holding this. And then we are, we're all more alone. So if I want to reframe what you originally said, I don't think it's like a, I don't think it's possible as of now to do things in unison and in complete, you know, egalitarianism, I think. But the idea is that we're leaning on each other and in certain topics, each partner is like holding it so the other one can fly higher. Because at the end of the day, that was the couple's like, for one part to fly high in their creativity, imagination, there needs to be another person who's holding reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. And perhaps we can see, I got this, it's almost like taking turns and holding reality so the other person can fly, can be happy. Nice. Any last comments? No, that was great. So this was our first expiration. Wait, how do I feel about this episode? Yeah. I'm going to do a little laugh. Yeah. How do I feel about my answer? Yeah, how do I feel about this? How was it sharing this space? I loved it. Yeah, you definitely have so much to say. You need, you need, you need like a bigger stage and audience to like convey a message. And I also felt like we were going through a process here. We started a little bit more like this and then slowly softening up and going to the emotional bit underneath. And I feel like... It was like a softening up of that understanding in both of us. I felt the relation space like softening up and feeling closer. Yeah. yeah. I think you were able to lead us there, to be completely honest. Say more about that. <clears throat> I don't know. It was my case. I felt like I opened up. You don't have to. There was something there that you, that you shifted the energies to a softer place. Maybe I went from blaming you to sharing the need I have. I went to my need. Nonviolent communication. Mm, maybe. So, so this was Galit Romanelli. And Dr. Ocel Romanelli. And this was Hugging Ra. Hugging Ra. We'll see you next time.